Shalom, 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 Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Let's see if I can just tag a few people. I know I'm driving, but I ain't in no danger zone, so my sister always be on me, so I stopped uh, making videos while I'm moving around, so, but I ain't uh, in no real traffic, so I'm just tagging a few people because... Man, this is real important, and I'm about to, I'm about to pull over as soon as I turn the corner, cause I got to get this off. I got to get this off. My my leg ain't my 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 insides ain't stopped quivering yet. They haven't stopped quivering yet. They just haven't, you know. And I'm gonna let y'all know why in a minute. I'm gonna pull in this gas station parking lot. I don't wanna pull in no parking lot, no place that's closed. So, so I don't wanna give the police no reason to be messing with me. Uh, yeah, so, man, this is, this is serious. This is real serious. So let me just get over here and pull over. Pull over so my sister, Mac Henry, She'll call and chew me out, and I know why. That's the reason why I gotta make this video. Yeah, so let me just tag a few people. Yeah, I know we've been dealing with wisdom here lately, and uh, we've been dealing with wisdom. And between, you got four books, you got four books of wisdom. You got the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, then you got the wisdom of Solomon, and then you got the book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus. And uh, we've been dealing with wisdom on a lot of different levels. And uh, I had uh, one of my young brothers called me yesterday uh, just to encourage me uh, on the videos that have been done. And he said, he said, you know, I used to struggle in those areas with anger and uh, with being hasty. He said, but I thank the Father that I've gotten better. He said, but something happened and, uh, and it really ignited something in me and made me so angry. Uh, he said, but... But because of how my son responded, he said, the way my son responded, all I could do was thank the father. That's the tag enough, a few, enough people. Now, he sent me the song. He said he works, he works uh, you know, construction, and he is the foreman, and he is uh, the only brother. Well, I think it was one more brother. And he was telling me how that the uh, heathens that he was working with, that he would come to work and they would have nooses hanging out and all type of stuff, you know. He said, and, and one day, <coughs> two of the guys going to try him. He said, and he had to handle one. And then the other came. He said, what he ended up doing was handling both of them. And, uh, and I just couldn't believe it. That's unreal to me because I ain't never really been in no situation to where I've been around heathens like that. I ain't never really had to work for them or nothing like that. But, but that was, that was something. But he was telling me that his son now is following in his footsteps and, and he's teaching his son the truth and share with him the things that he learned. And these guys, there is a, there is a song that the heathens have put out and it is it, and they got bass with it and everything he said i'm gonna have to, i'm gonna sing you the song and he said but what happened is that is that my son went to work and all of these heathens were singing this song you understand what i'm saying he said, but my son came back and responded because the song was talking about a nigger from Alabama and this or that or the other. And they got a video out on it and everything. And they got, they imitating us where our bass and where our music is concerned. But it's real hardcore derogatory and racist. He said, but the way my son responded, he said, my son said, but daddy, that's, he said, well, what you want to do about it? He said, well, Daddy, I don't want to do nothing about it. 
He said, because I ain't no Nick. I'm an Israelite. So they can say what they want to say. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is that all through the scriptures, we see that names were <laughs> significant. Okay? Because all of the prophets and the people of Israel and their sons, they were given names that their destiny was attached to. And so as you were called by those names, you would become what they called you. As Yahshua, that meant the Lord saves, became the savior of the world. The same Yahshua, that the same name that uh, the one that was tied to Moses, Yahshua, means the Lord saves. He saved the children of Israel from taking them from the wilderness into the promised land. You had every last prophet name meant something, and they became what they were called. And so in our day, we have been called all types of things, and we have become what they called us. We have even called our own children, our own brothers and sisters, by names that they became. You know what? Isaac named his son Jacob, which means Sir Planner, Trickster, Con Man, Schemer. And Jacob mm -hmm. became what they called him. Mm -hmm. But out there on the hill, after he done schemed and after he done tricked his brother out of his birthright and schemed for his blessing and then went in there and got Laban's two daughters and left out of there on, with all the riches that the brothers would have had. You understand what I'm saying? Out there on that hill where he couldn't go backwards and couldn't go forward, when the angel came and said, what is your name? He said, I'm, I'm Jacob. I'm the con man. I'm the trickster. I'm the schemer. But the angel of the Lord said, your name is not Jacob. Your name is Israel. As a prince, you have power with God and have prevailed over men. So the first half of his name, Isra, is dealing with the prevailing and the wrestling. The wrestling and the prevailing over men. The second half of his name is dealing with him being a prince and having a new destiny and having power with the Most High. As a prince, thou have power with God. Isra, you have prevailed. You have wrestled and prevailed. El, mm -hmm. you have power with God. Elohim, you have power. All right? And so the significance of that is that, is that to teach our sons and our daughters and call them by names that have a destiny attached to it, that they will live up, that they, they will live into. So when we start calling our children by their true name, Israel, your name is Israel. It means that there is nothing that nobody can do to stand in our way because we have power and we have prevailed and wrestled and prevailed against all of the heathens that try to oppress us. And we are princes and we have power with the Most High because we understood who we were. But we were called all of these things. That is the reason why Psalms 83, 1 through 4 exist. Let us cut them off from being a nation that they don't remember that their name is Israel. That they don't remember that they have the might to wrestle and prevail over us. And that they have power with the Father because they are princes. And so this event that happened... Everybody already know. Everybody already know. God knows. God knows. Please don't let me get choked up. Yeah, what does she even want? What's. No, I got a serious issue. I need to know where. Uh... Um, Blue Ridge sounds better. Blue Ridge is? Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> Town South? Yeah. Okay, right town south. This is 63rd Street. Yeah. All you got to do is, let me see, go out 63rd Street, and 63rd Street, once you get so far, you come to where the highway is, you go to the right and turn the 350 Highway. 350 Highway. Yep, go out 63rd Street, turn right at the highway. Uh, when you see the overpass, Turn right, that's 350 Highway, and then just going out 350 Highway, you'll see the school sitting off to the right-hand side. Okay, right on All right, all right. Yeah, so, so you know, and that's another thing, you know what I'm saying? You know, even, even in the kingdom that ain't ours, we still have the power to give influence. But, okay, back to the story at hand.
Everybody know I'm praying that I don't get choked up while I'm doing this video because I got to think about my main man. You know, I everybody know I lost one of my sons, you know, young general, young general, Deshaun Tatum, you know what I'm saying, behind a $159 water bill. And I chalk it up as the father's will, but I also have to understand is that everything don't always have to go the way that it go. Sometimes, you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we can stand down. And so I just witnessed the event a minute ago. And I'm not going to speak on it, but any of the brothers that's younger than me, 10, 15 years younger than me, you understand what I'm saying? I consider them not just as my brothers, but I consider them as my sons. You understand what I'm saying? But as I witnessed this incident, I'm helpless because I'm on Facebook and I'm on the other side of the world. And my insides still have not stopped quivering because there is no limit to what these heathens can do. And we are not in our kingdom yet. We're not in the kingdom yet. And we are still in their kingdom. And we still don't have no might in our hand. And the Bible tells us that when we get in certain situations, agree with thy adversary quickly lest he throw you into the stocks. When we start really looking at that, who has the capacity to throw a man in the stocks? We're talking about them who authority have been given to to uh, cast men into prison. We also have the scripture in Zechariah 11 and 5 that tells us that those whose possessors and those that oppress us, they will slay us. They will murder us. And then they will hold themselves not guilty. And so hear me, brothers and sisters. From the book of Proverbs, from chapter 1 through chapter 7, every first beginning of the verse begins with, my son, my son. My son, my son, my son. This is the importance. It's twofold. Not only is it the importance of a son heeding the instruction that the father is passing down. It also is the importance of the father possessing enough wisdom that he can hand down the proper instruction for his children. Hey, man, we know that Jacob's trouble started. When Jerusalem fell, and we are this close to the Most High coming back to do what he was going to do to his enemies. But we are not in the kingdom yet, and we have not been delivered yet, and we still uh, don't have no might in our hand. So when it comes to dealing <laughs> with these heathens that wear the symbol of Baphomet, who have no rules to live by. We must use wisdom. It's not a matter of being afraid. It's not a matter of letting people just do whatever they want to do. It's a matter of us understanding where we stand <coughs> opposed to where our enemies stand. Because this, this governmental system right here, they will rein in and bring down all of the forces of the United States government to protect one heathen. And one heathen, that means that one heathen, if you give one heathen his just due, they will bring in the whole, we've seen what happened with Michael Brown in St. Louis. Why am I saying this? Because the brothers that are in Israel, that have influence, that the Father have grace with knowledge and understanding and wisdom and the ability to teach and the ability to move around freely. Those that have been detached from this system must understand that we have targets on our backs. We have a target on our back already. You're already on the watch list. You're already logged with Homeland Security. 
And so sometimes we have to have foresight enough to see that because you will have a target on your back and because people been watching us and know who we are every now and then. Some heathen or some heathen up under Satan's influence will try and drag us out of the place that we're supposed to be out of the out of the shelter of the most high. And it has nothing to do with whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Because the heathen don't know anything but wickedness. He don't care whether it's right or whether it's wrong. But we ain't never been justified in the system that we are living in. And we're not going to be justified in this system until Christ come back. And therefore, it is about preservation. Because just the same way that we lost young general, the family of Israel suffered behind that. How much more would it be? If we lose another brother that has impact and influence and have affected people all over the four corners, our brothers and sisters scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, which is too important. It's too important. And the book of wisdom tells us, we've seen a young brother on TV that the police stopped. He wouldn't let down the window. And they came crashing through the window. We seen the young brother that thought he had rights. They want to recite his rights only to get shot four times. We seen these things happen. And just because the heathen is wrong doesn't mean that we're to come out of our character or come. We got to understand this. When the book of Sirach is talking about when you come to serve the most high, set your heart all right. That's not just it. Set your heart all right and prepare thy soul for temptation. Those of us, those of us, our younger brothers that are serving the most high, you have to understand that temptation is coming. And when it get there, he says, set your heart all right and constantly endure. Make not haste because that is what people intend to do. They want to do things to us in a way that makes us hasty. It causes our people to be hasty when they hurt one of us. And then the next thing you know, we all out in the streets in an uproar. Well, see, that's what they want us to do. Because the father told us not to be hasty. He said, cleave to him and take whatever comes upon you cheerfully that you may be increased at your last end. These things are important because we cannot afford to lose another valuable son to another meaningless thing. The scripture tells us he who does not rule his spirit is like a city that doesn't have walls. It means that you can be dead right and you can, you can have the right to be angry. And just because you have a right to slap the taste out of somebody's mouth does not mean that you have to. This has nothing to do with being a punk this has nothing to do with being a coon or being weak or being timid. It has something to do with exercising wisdom to know that the Father sees everything. He said, be not hasty to go out of my sight. Cleave to me and whatever come upon you, whatever the heathen try to bring upon you, take it cheerfully because I'm going to use that to increase you at your last end. For gold is tried in the fire, but acceptable men are tried in the furnace of affliction. And when the father is going to be able to accept the man, he got to make it through the series of tests that the father rolled out there. But the, the tests that the father rolled out there, are, they, they're called for endurance, perseverance. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Cling to him. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger <coughs> arrested in the bosom of fools. He that is soon angry will deal it foolishly. We cannot allow. And I know every, we all, we know that these heathens going to get what they got coming. And we want to see it. But just we know 
that we're not going to be the ones to bring it upon him. The Father is going to bring it upon him. And until he do, we have to operate in the principles that he have laid out before us. Because every time we don't operate in the principles that he laid out before us, we literally tie his hands because we failed the test. And I'm telling you, and I only pray, I only pray that our brothers and our young brothers, because as I see things happen, I got to be, I'm going, I've become what people call me. I never called myself no elder. That's what people call me. And because of that, the most high, he's going to make me become what they say. So what does an elder do? An elder steps in. An elder watches. An elder is older. It don't mean he's no better. It means that he's older. He has more life experience. He can see things that a young man is, uh, is yet to face and give him some understanding or give him some instruction. He also can come in there and tell you, so only pray that when these things happen, because if I see it, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to come. And then sometime in my spirit, I have to go and pray and say, Father, please, please help my brothers to understand. I'm not coming against them. It's out of love that I'm going to say what I'm saying. Help them to understand how valuable that they are. Help them to understand how important that they are. That even if the things that are spoken sting a little bit, help them to understand that it's not an assault against them. It's just that they're too great and they got too much greatness wrapped up in their bones. And if they line, they footstep across the line a little bit, then that's what we for. Because that thing shook me up. Because the only thing that I could see is the loss that I just experienced. And the young brother that this happened to, I feel the same way about him. And as I sit there and watched, there was nothing that I could do as I was nervous. Because we have seen too many times things take a turn for the worst. And then we end up suffering loss. That there is no justice for. There is no getting back for. There's no recovering from. After it's done. So hear me young brothers. Hear me. If you have an encounter. With the heathen. That is up under the influence of Baphomet. Because he wears his symbol on his chest. Please. The Bible say even a fool is considered wise when he just hold his peace. Just hold your peace for preservation's sake. The Bible tells us to take what take cheerfully whatever comes up on us. Be of good cheer as we are changed to a low estate. He's saying, I know it ain't right. And I know that your feelings is hurt and your manhood is stepped on. I know you might have your wife with you while they talking crazy. Your children might see it. He said, but listen, be of a humble spirit. Be of good cheer when you are changed to a lower state because you're not doing it because you're afraid or because you're without courage. You're doing it because you understand that you are too valuable. And if something was ever happened to you, then the wife would suffer. The children would suffer. All of Israel would suffer. And it's the influential men of Israel that these things are going to happen to. And based on how we deal with them, it's going to determine the outcome. I just thank the father that it didn't end. The way so many other incidents have ended. And I just, you know, there is no limit to the test that's coming Israel's way in the days to come. You got to be built up. We got to know that the father, nothing escapes his presence. Nothing escapes his eyesight that he have wrath stored up for those that are against them that he is jealous of. He said, I got a ball of wrath stored up for them, just waiting on them. 
but I need you to stand down. I don't need you dealing with the heathen because I ain't giving you no power to deal with the heathen. I don't need you dealing with it. I need for you to stand down and have a, a low, a, be of a low, be, be of a low estate, be of a humble spirit to know that I don't miss nothing. And at the appointed time, I'm going to throw this ball of wrath at the heathen. And there was prophecy that been going out. For the last five months that we start prophesying that for every time they hurt a Hebrew, a hundred of their children are going to get slaughtered by the hand of their own children. Every time they hurt a Hebrew, every time they mistreat one of our sisters, shoot one of our kids, the father going to destroy a hundred of their children by the hands of their own sons and daughters. And even as we turn the TV on this morning, my wife said, babe, it happened again because we put the video on there about how the police had just dogged and tased one of our brothers and slapped him all across the head and was bragging about it. And she said, babe, it happened again. It happened again. And we see that the police is being shot down by their own people. Don't tell me what the father can't do, but we need our brothers. We need our young brothers. We need our young brothers. Don't be too quick to respond. Remember what the father said. When you come to serve me, prepare those soul for temptation and set your heart all right and constantly endure. Yeah, you might be mad. Yeah, you might be angry. Yeah, they might be the stepped on you, but you endure those things and cleave to the father. Don't allow your anger to make you hasty. Don't, don't do what they do because they can talk reckless to us. But when we talk reckless to them, it gives them an open door and they can come in and kill us all. Come in and kill you, kill your wife, kill your children. And the scripture says that they're going to go into their just us system that only cares for them. And they will declare themselves not guilty. And Israel is going to suffer for it. My brothers, hear me. Hear me. We must use wisdom and discretion wisdom and discretion because if you ever want to pull a black man a israelite out of his character you don't have to do too much to him because he got so much anger and frustration from oppression built up they know these things this is why they do them they say, you know what? A soft-spoken word turns away wrath. I could be dead mad, dead angry, dead pissed off. But I'm going to be smiling. I'm going to be smiling at you. And I'm going to be treating you like, you like you the king of the world. Because I understand that if I treat you like I want to treat you in your kingdom, the chances are I may not make it through the night. And if I die, too many people are going to suffer. This is what we need our young brothers to understand. The life that the Father had placed in you for such a time of this, it is too valuable. It is too important. It is bigger than you. It's bigger than the way you feel. It's bigger than pride. It's bigger than what we call manhood. Sometimes it's about preservation. Preservation of the next generation of Israelite children that are to be raised up in the fullness and in the power and in the might of the Most High. But we have to operate. And for my brother, my brother, I want to just keep my brother and his son lifted up and just let the Father show his glory through us when we operate like that. And for my other brother, the young king, I won't mention no names, but you'll know who he is. I want him to understand that I love you 
It frightened me. It frightened me. Because I'm, you know, I'm so used to seeing a different outcome that it frightened me. We lost my young general for a $159 water bill. And sometime I wonder, what would it be like if he just went on back next door and dealt with the landlord or something of that nature? You know what I'm saying? God called him home. God took him. But you can't. You're always going to look at other things. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I want my young brother to understand. I'm trying to rebuke you or none of that. But you got to understand that you're valuable. That you're valuable. And that your loss will cause many people to suffer. This is all of our brothers. Even our brothers that don't think that don't think that they're impactful. They don't think that they're uh, real significant because they ain't teaching or they ain't in Facebook or ain't in the limelight on YouTube. But they are valuable because the Father has breathed his life and his spirit in them. And we cannot keep allowing the heathen to strategically drag us out from up under the, the wings of the Most High. We have to cling to Him, hurting, disappointed, feeling rejected, feeling stepped on. My manhood, my pride, my character, and everything is stepped on, but the Father is near them. It's of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He said, cleave to me. Cleave to me. Don't make haste to get out of my sight. Don't come out there and start fighting people that you can't win against. Cleave to me and watch what I do to them. He said, if you come from up out, up out of the shadow of my wings, I can't protect you. I need you to be right here. Hear me, young brothers. Don't come out from up under the shadow of the Most High. Cleave to him. And be of a cheerful countenance when you are brought low and changed to a man of a lower state. Cleave to him. Be cheerful when they disrespect you in front of your wife, in front of your children. So whatsoever come upon you, take it cheerfully. Because I am going to increase you in the end when I rebuke every one of your enemies. We need our brothers to hear this. We need our brothers to hear this. And this is serious. Because we are already being watched. We have already been labeled as black identity extremists. We are already on the terrorist watch list. We are already been labeled as against the government. Against the state. We are already been labeled. They already know that their 400 years is almost up. They already know that judgment is coming their way. But in their sick, twisted mind, they say if we can kill them all, then by default, the Most High won't have no reason to come back. We'll inherit the earth. The Bible say that the meek are going to inherit the earth. Those are the tests. Those are the methods that the Father have laid down before <laughs> us. So if you ever feel like your manhood has been stepped on, don't think about you. Think about the children that's coming up behind you. If you ever been disrespected by a heathen and you feel helpless, don't think about you. Think about the wife that's going to suffer if something was to ever happen to you. Think about all of the people that's depending on you. I just want to lift our brothers up. This is a wicked season that we are living in. And the worst is yet to come. But the Father, we are counted as sheep to the slaughter. One thing about a sheep is that you'll never see him fighting back. Because the sheep depends on the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water and he will restore my soul. Everything that they try to take out, he will restore my soul. You see, a sheep don't fight back. A sheep don't do that. A sheep goes to the slaughter. He goes to the slaughter with his head held high because he understands who he is. He sticks his own neck out there. Go on and cut it off. Because the Lord is my shepherd. It's better for me to die in his namesake. It's what it is. But I don't want to die fighting in my flesh. If you're going to kill me, you're going to have to kill me with a smile on my face. You're not going to kill me arguing and fussing at you. You know, I'm not going to give you no reason to kill me. It's going to be hard for you to kill me. Because I'm going to be smiling at you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you right. Yeah, you right. Yeah, you right. Call me a nigga. Yeah, you right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. And some of you brothers might say, oh, well, that's a coon nigga. That's a this. Now, it ain't a coon nigga. That's a wise nigga. Because they've been killing, they've been killing, killing brothers like that with that attitude the whole time. You see? How do you think we still here? We are still here because the forefathers that gave birth to us was able to bite the bullet. They realized that it was more important for them to humble themselves and stand down that they might be around to teach their children how to preserve the grandchildren. And that's what we aiming to do. So I just saw, uh, I hope that our brothers and sisters really hear us. I hope our brothers and sisters really hear us. And I can't stress this enough, you know what I'm saying, that everything is born out of love, but you know, the Bible says that if you rebuke a wise man, he will love you for it. He will love you for it. You know, and if a fool is considered wise when he keep his mouth shut sometimes, how much more is a wise man? You see, Somebody like, they, they will be red. They will be red as an apple when they walked away from me. But I would be smiling and laughing and joking and spitting scriptures at you too in the process. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, you know, yeah, I'd be spitting scriptures at you in the process. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't allow you to get the upper hand on me. I use on you. I'm controlling this whole show. You ain't going to control nothing. I'm controlling the show. So if you're going to kill me, you're going to kill me just because it's in your heart to kill me. And we're going to kill him either way. We just want him to give us a reason to kill him. And if he don't give us a reason to kill him, we're going to kill him anyway. Just because he was smarter than we were. That's how it was going to be. That's how it was going to be. That's how it was going to be, so... Let's get it. We got some tough times coming. And every brother, every brother that's in the scripture, every brother that know the scripture, every brother that's praying, every brother that got the spirit, we can't afford to lose nobody now. The ones that's being killed in the street, God is removing them. The father is removing them because of their rebellion. But the ones of us that are connected to him, we cannot afford to lose not one. Not one. So... Well, y'all, on this Sabbath, on this Sabbath, let's be mindful to keep each other lifted up in prayer that we may be able to withstand the days to come. Shabbat Shalom.